Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, the 7th, 7th, yeah, 7th of June. Hope you're doing well. Um, hope you guys are staying cool. It's supposed to get warm again. Um, so stay cool, everybody. Be careful. Enjoy the sun, though. Uh, hope you get a chance to be outside when it's cooler, maybe in the evening or in the morning, uh, and enjoy the, the, the beauty of, of this place. We, we are surrounded by some very beautiful, uh, realities here in Spokane. Um, and, 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 and this is our chance to live into that. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be looking at Psalm, uh, 52 and the Gospel of Luke chapter 17 verses 11, uh, through 19. Um, Psalm 52 is, is, uh, this is another one of those tricky Psalms. This is a, uh, in a sense, it's a lament, but it's also a, um, it's it's one of these precatory psalms which makes an accusation against uh, those in the world who practice injustice. I think is the right way to say it. This is a, it is a prayer, but it's 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 a prayer in a sense for vengeance, really, uh, against those that uh, that that are practicing injustice and manipulation and and these things. And and so we read this with the. We read this as humans, right? We are human beings and we have these instincts. We want to rage against injustice. We want to push against the things that, that are not right in the world. Um, we might even call that righteous anger, right? Uh, and yet there's also this reality that God is the one whose vengeance, uh, to whom vengeance belongs. Um, our ways of practicing vengeance would be incomplete and probably uh, would involve a sense of chaos to them. Probably make matters worse, right? Um, God's justice is perfect. And so we lean into that and we pray for it. And so that's what the psalm is doing. So let's take a, let's take a listen to Psalm 52. Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? That, that's sort of a sarcastic response, right? Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long? You who are a disgrace in the eyes of God. You who practice deceit. Your tongue plots destruction. It's like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good. Falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word, you deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you, saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. I, however, am a tree like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you, God, have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. So we're grateful that the psalm resolves into a focus on God himself. It is this, you know, you know the, the, the claim of injustice has been made, and now it's been handed over to God, the, the one who can practice righteous um, righteous justice uh, in a way that we can't. All right, let's take a look at Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Now, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? The other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. I invite you to join me as we pray our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let's go to God. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life. 
we have received by your grace and the new life you give in Christ Jesus. We especially thank you, Lord, for the love of our families, for the affection of our friends. We thank you for strength and abilities to serve your purpose today. Thank you for the community in which we live. We thank you for opportunities to give as we have received. I invite you to lift up your own prayers of thanksgiving. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others, and we commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Christ. Today, Lord, we pray for those closest to us, our families, our friends, and our neighbors. We pray for refugees, homeless men, women, and children. We pray, God, for the outcast and the persecuted. For those from whom we are estranged. We pray for the church in Africa. I invite you to lift up your own prayers of intercession. God of our salvation, as the light of morning dawns, heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and to grow in faith, so that we may bear good fruit for your, for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Friends, good to be with you this morning. Uh, Pray that you see God in the midst of your day and that you notice and enjoy his presence as you move about your, your life today. Take care, friends. We'll see you again soon.